Today is the 28th of September. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship. And if you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a simple pattern of a thought for the day, scripture, prayers, and some music. So without any more preamble, let's start today's leg of Walking the Way. Matthew 6, 33 Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Yesterday we talked about sin and how it was a word that made people feel very uncomfortable. And it's ironic as I say this, considering this comes from the United Kingdom, but kingdom is another word that makes people feel just a little bit weird. In our modern democratic society, I wonder if we truly understand what it means to be under an absolute ruler. Because that's what kingdom is. And I'm sure that there are those who consider themselves ultimate rulers. Dictators in North Korea, China, and parts of Africa behave as kings did only a few hundred years ago. No wonder we have such a problem with the idea of kingdom. And yet here we have Jesus telling us to seek the kingdom of God. It's a command that carries a blessing, and all these things will be added unto you. What things? Well, this verse comes in the middle of the Sermon of the Mount, in which Jesus is saying the kingdom of this world is nothing in comparison to the kingdom of God. Many of the things Jesus mentions were done to Jews by Romans. Being forced to walk the extra mile, being slapped on the cheek, giving someone your cloak. These were things that Roman soldiers and citizens could demand of their subjects. And this is why the Sermon on the Mount is so subversive. It takes the mickey out of the state. You see, the kingdom of God is not a dictatorial state ruled by an iron fist dictator. Rather, it's a kingdom governed by the Prince of Peace that stoops to care for the downtrodden and the weak. And that's a kingdom I want to be part of. And today's opening prayer is by Archbishop Oscar Romero. Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them. A world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and the courage to build it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to have our first piece of music to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And after the music, we'll dive into our Bible readings for today.
Let's ask God to speak to us as we engage with his word today. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, help us to move into a deeper understanding of your truth. We lay our lives down before you and ask that you would move amongst us. May we all feel safe. Safe to think and question. Safe to ask for help. And safe to share our lives with you, our loving Heavenly Father. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from the New International Version, and we begin with 2 Kings 23, verses 36, through chapter verses, through chapter 24, sorry, verse 17. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Zebediah, daughter of Pediah. She was from Rumah, and he did evil in the eyes of his lord, just as his predecessors had done. During Jehoiakim's reign, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon invaded the land, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. But then he turned against Nebuchadnezzar and rebelled. The Lord sent Babylonian, Aramean, Moabites, and Ammonite raiders against him to destroy Judah, in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by his servants the prophets. Surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command, in order to remove them from his presence, because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done, including the shedding of innocent blood. For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forgive. As for the other events of Jehoiakim's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoiakim rested with his ancestors, and Jehoiachin, his son, succeeded him as king. The king of Egypt did not march out for his own country again because the king of Babylon had taken all of his territory, from the Wadi of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became a king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elanithan. She was from Jerusalem. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time, the officers of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And Nebuchadnezzar himself came up to the city while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and his mother, his attendants, his nobles, and all his officials surrendered to him. In the eighth year of the reign of the king of Babylon, he took Jehoiachin prisoner. As the Lord declared, Nebuchadnezzar removed the treasures from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace and cut up the gold articles that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the temple of the Lord. He carried all Jerusalem into exile, all the officers and fighting men, and all the skilled workers and artisans, a total of ten thousand. Only the poorest of the land were left. Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin captive to Babylon. He also took from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother, his wives, his officials, and the prominent people of the land. The king of Babylon also deported to Babylon the entire force of 7,000 fighting men, strong and fit for war, and a 1,000 skilled workers and artisans. He made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 26. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot were to say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if an ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? Just as it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that were seen to be weaker are indispensable. 
and the parts that we think of as less honourable we treat with special honour, and the parts that are unpresentable were treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Matthew nine twenty seven through 34 As Jesus went on from there, two blind men follow him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, It is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. We're going to have our second piece of music to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have just crept up and caught our attention. And after the music, we're going to say our prayers for the day and the time of the year. Let's say our prayers for the day and the time of the year, shall we? Let's pray. Lord, on this day I am aware of the troubles and the darkness in our world. Please come and lead me in prayers for my community, my nation and the world. You are the light that shines in the bleakest times. Let your kingdom be built on earth. May those who suffer be comforted. May those who are at war search for peace. And may those who are in pain find healing. Amen. And our prayers for the time of the year. We pray for families torn apart by explosion of missile or artillery round, and those living in fear of rocket launch or terrorist fire, wherever they might be, whoever they might be. For they are united in their adversity and distress. Bring comfort, peace, and refreshment to those whose hearts are dry. We pray for leaders who have no regard for the sanctity of human life in pursuit of ideologies or political ambition. Wherever they are, whoever they might be, 
for they are united in their arrogance and willfulness. Lord, bring wisdom, love, and repentance for those whose hearts are cold. For your love is far greater than the hatred of this world, far greater than the sorrows of this world. Infuse this world with your love, and begin with us, we pray. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, and remain with us all, now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And you've been listening to Walking the Way, a podcast based on the book This Day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer, by Lawrence Hulse Dukey and published by Abingdon Press. All the details can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the prayers and the music. And for more information, please head to rayborrett.co.uk, where you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube. And just a reminder that we have a crowdfunding campaign to spread the news about walking the way and to pay for some equipment upgrades. So if you want to support us, please visit www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way to make your donation. All your help in developing the podcast and giving more people the opportunity to have a regular rhythm of worship would be hugely appreciated. And so we say thank you in advance to all those who are giving. And to close today's episode, we're going back to my early Christian music collection with the band Allies and their album Shoulder to Shoulder. And today's track is Angelina. My name is Ray. I love you all. And I'll be here tomorrow, waiting as we continue walking the way. But something ain't right Cause Angelina's lost among the city lights You're chasing desire Girl, you're playing with fire You're falling Those far away